So I'm going to share with you uh, some a thought process that we're we're all going through here, um, specifically as it involves involves these literature connections. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the real importance of understanding text and why these lessons are developed the way they are. So for those of you who have used Empowering Writers and have started out in that first month, the first six weeks, you see that there's a lot of time spent really on what I would consider this middle section, on this annotation and analysis, the summarizing frameworks, the graphic organizers. And oftentimes teachers will say to us, and the feedback is, wow, there's a lot of time spent on not writing. And you're right, we're not writing. What are we doing as we are analyzing what authors do? And so why is that important? And so I think this is a really good graphic to really, to really pause on just a moment and show you how this information that we do so often with students is all about the foundations of literacy. It is the foundations that they need to understand to be strategic readers. It's understanding genre, is it narrative? Is it informational? Is it opinion? And for anybody who came into this teaching position and wasn't clear on that, you don't need to be embarrassed by that. I wasn't. I was teaching in a classroom and didn't realize I didn't even know how to explain these to my students. So really understanding what the genre is, what's the organizational structure, and what is the graphic organizer that goes along with it. So for sake of argument here, these graphic organizers, you can buy a book. You can go online. You can go to teachers, pay teachers and look for graphic organizers on informational writing or on narrative writing or opinion writing. But here's the problem is that all of the, because I did it my first year in the classroom, not teachers pay teachers. I, don't, I won't tell you why, because it didn't exist, but I bought a book on graphic organizers and I actually looked at them and said, oh, what, these are great. Oh, I love this roller coaster. I'm going to hang the roller coaster over here. And oh, I love this faucet with the plot and the characters dripping out. I'm going to put that up over here. And I had all these graphic organizers for kids to look at. And when tell them when they started to read to just pick one as their organizational to help organize their writing, pick one, I said, pick one. Can you imagine how confusing that was for kids? So one of the first things we did was we recognized right away that all of us as teachers used all different graphic organizers. In order to build consistency and assured experiences, we created the writing diamond, we created the pillar. And so in this very first section where we talk about the foundations of literacy, the first thing we talk about is genre, is it narrative, is it expository, is it opinion? Why did the author write it? To entertain, to inform, to share an opinion, and what's the organization of it? Does it work in that summarizing framework is where you're going to find that organization. This story is about the problem the adventure was, the problem concluded when, or topic, main idea, main idea, main idea, or topic, main reason, main reason, main reason, depending upon whatever we're writing to. These summarizing frameworks allows us to have every single reading experience summarized and simplified in the same way that we would do for each genre. Annotation and analysis is basically looking at, off, at, at what writers write with a pen in your hand. What did they do? And why did they do it? And what ends up happening is by moving through this section right off at the beginning of the year, every single time you read, you can read with author's eyes. You can see what authors have done. And so for many of us as teachers, we don't read that way. So what happens when we go to read student work? We don't read it by through the, the eyes of an author. Therefore, our feedback is general. Great start, can you write more? Ooh, could you use a little sentence variety? Oh, that I like how this, this paragraph is starting, but none of that feedback is anything kids can act on. So to take it a little deeper, when we annotate, annotate and analyze, what do we annotate and analyze for? Well, we absolutely look at organization, how did the author organize the piece? And then we start to take a deeper dive into the skills the authors used. So what you see on the outside of this Venn diagram for narrative writing are the particular skills that authors use when they write a narrative piece. Does that mean it's the only skills throughout their whole entire life? No. Is it foundational work they absolutely need to springboard into novelists? Yes, they need to understand these basic skills entertaining beginnings and their function, elaborative detail, why does it work well and what's worthy of elaborative detail, suspense or story tension, what's that main event, that single significant event the whole piece is about, and how did that? How do we wrap that up in a satisfying way for the reader? 
and for the and for the writer. So these are the skills that we would take a deeper dive into. So if my job is to teach my students how to generate a narrative piece, I'm going to go through this center here, this foundations of literacy for both informational and narrative writing. So that anytime my kids are in front of text, I can ask some very specific questions. Then I'm going to jump into narrative because I want them to be able to write it. I'm going to teach them discreetly through my methodology by finding examples of entertaining beginnings in literature, by modeling that skill, providing them the guided practice and looking for evidence of that in application. And the same holds true for informational writing. But what I want you to do right now is I want you to look at this for a moment and I want you to put on your teacher's lens. And I want you to recognize that every single time I teach a student a specific skill, whole class instruction, I know they all know how to write effective elaborative detail because I did several lessons on it and we talked about it. What that allows you to do is not only do you read with author's eyes, but you are a, a, able as the teacher to revise and edit in really meaningful ways. Why is that? Because you're looking at student writing and you know the elements that you taught and you're gonna to expect to see these. And when you don't, you know how to get, provide productive feedback to get your students to be able to generate that. So I always like to look at these skills over here as tools in my toolbox. Until I teach my kids how to do it well, I can't expect anything other than this story is about, or hello, my name is, or one sunny day. Why do I expect that? Because that's all they know. And because I haven't taught it yet. But once I teach that skill directly and show them other ways that they can do it, then I can hold them accountable for it. That means that when they're looking at, I'm looking at their writing, I can look at those beginnings and I can prompt them through productive questions on how they can write more. And the same thing goes for each one of these skills. As soon as I teach my students it, and as soon as they have time to practice and guided practice, I can hold them accountable for what I expect in their writing. And I always say to my, my teachers, and I, I remember this when I was in my own classroom, you can never say to your kids, I don't want you to write your story or you start your stories this way until you offer them an alternative. Because unless they know how to create entertaining beginnings, they have no other alternative. So all of those tools give me the alternatives kids need. So that's really important when we really look at that. But the other thing that I want you to recognize and think about because teaching writing can be so overwhelming, is that when I do this, what I would consider a literacy launch, when I look at student writing and I teach my students exactly how to look at writing this way, then what happens is now my conversations with kids really are twofold, either generative, they're gonna be writing those, or just on an awareness level. So we're in science, We've done this literacy. We looked at the foundations of literacy. We have annotated informational writing. I asked my students to, to please do me a favor, boys and girls. I want you to skim and scan your science book for this unit that we're gonna be doing. And I want you to summarize what the topic is and what the main ideas are. Oftentimes the topic is in the title. The main ideas are the subheadings. So before they ever start to write, they can start to make some assumptions of what they think they're gonna be learning within the article. Is it always perfect? No, because sometimes articles aren't written that way. And, and as uh, most of the time they are, but as they become better at this, I always like to offer them some alternatives and show them ways in which it might be set up differently and why is it a little harder to pick and choose this information from. During this time when we're doing all this work with our students, you will say, we're not writing. And I'll say, you're not, you're absolutely not. You're annotating and you're analyzing and you're looking at what writers do, deconstructing for the purposes of reconstructing. And that's okay. And I will say this, I've worked with a lot of teachers who find this very uncomfortable because we always as teachers of writing say, oh my goodness, my kids have to write a full piece and I have to hurry up and get going. And we have to, and you know what we find is the more time we spend on this foundational work that's so necessary, the sooner they can hit the ground running that when they actually start to write, they're gonna be able to, to produce pieces that are much more coherent than before. Any questions on that? There's a lot of information there. And a lot of what we just talked about is a little different than how um, we normally 
have looked at this. So what traditionally we've done in Empowering Writers is we held you accountable for the genre and organization and the graphic organizers, the summarizing frameworks of the genre you're teaching. So if you happen to teach narrative writing at the time, then that's what you're gonna work on. What, what we're gonna look at a little differently going forward is really is at that first month of school is to spend the time looking at multiple genres so that you can in fact um, really revisit every single text that you're looking at and have a really productive experience with it from a strategic reading perspective and also from an ability to understand what kids are reading. Questions? 